Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and we are now in week 7, the halfway point of the season, and we will go ahead and check out everything. Also, I like to do the off-season stuff live, so if you can, like, like, share, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff, you know. And as you can see, for the top 25 polls, polls who could have who would have predicted that Clemson would do the unthinkable and beat in fifth ranked Virginia Tech? Uh, that would be me. So, your top 25 now is first is Florida, second is Arkansas, third USC, fourth TCU, new fifth ranked team Florida State, LSU drops down to sixth, seventh is Wisconsin, eighth is Penn State, California's ninth, tenth is Miami, eleventh is Nebraska. 12th is, twen 12th is Tennessee, not Tennessee. Tennessee, Jesus. <laughs> I'm giving that in. Screw it. <laughs> 13th is Hawaii. 14th, Notre Dame. 15th, McNary Central. Virginia Tech falls all the way down to 16th. 17th is UCLA. 18th is Texas a and 19th is Texas. Ohio State's 20th. 21st is Kansas State. Georgia falls all the way down to 22. 23 is Michigan, 24th is West Virginia, and Oklahoma is 25th. Now, for the media, though, they agree Florida, Florida stays at number one, Arkansas stays at number two, three should be TCU, though, four should be USC, fifth, Florida State, and sixth, LSU, they agree on that, seventh, Wisconsin, eighth, Penn State, but they say Nebraska should be ninth. And California should be 10th. McNary Central should be 11th. Miami should be 12th. 13th, Notre Dame. 14th, Kansas State. 15th, Tennessee. There we go. They agree Virginia Tech should be 16th. 17th should be Hawaii. 18th, UCLA. Ohio State, 19th. 20th, Texas. 21st, Oregon State. 22nd, Northwestern. 23rd Michigan, 24th Texas A&M, and 25th Oklahoma. Now, for the coaches poll, Boise State, Mickey, Louisville, Texas Tech, Iowa, Northwestern, Minnesota, Oregon State, and Pittsburgh all received votes. And for the media, Mickey's just on the outside looking in at 26. And you have West Virginia, Boise State, Michigan State, Georgia, Texas Tech, Minnesota, Clemson, and Louisville. And now it's time for the bottom 10, which I was like going to the conference standings for. And let's go this way because it's quicker. In first place, Wyoming. And 7.4 points per game. And only two touchdowns through both the air and the ground. Not the recipe for success at all. Granted, they did just go against TCU, lost 35 to seven. They really need to get something going, and go on a historic run, or else they'll basically, this will basically be the end of the road for the Cowboys. Again, against New Mexico, though, team averaging 36 points per game, it's not looking well for them. Yeah, as you can see, their quarterback throwing two touchdowns and eight interceptions, and the running back isn't even the one with the with any rushing touchdowns. It's probably Bush, the other guy that's injured. Next, it's Washington. And the reason and the Huskies are now 0-5 and, and are ranked above well, above, below, whichever way you want to look at it for the bottom ten. Ranked above the other two winless teams because of the fact they're a power five school. They really need to turn it around this week, as they did nearly upset USC by a final score. Of 27 to 20, taking the loss there. Here, but hoping to take that momentum into their game this week against Arizona State. Whose two losses have both come from allowing 13 points in the fourth quarter. If Washington can get themselves in that first win of the year, here and how elusive it's. Like, that's the strategy that Washington's going to have to do is keep it close and hope to score 13 points while letting that Arizona State defense be tired out. 
And next, out of Louisiana Monroe and BYU, I just went down the list and went with Louisiana Monroe. And the reason why, they have a total of 221 points allowed this season, being third worst out of teams who haven't played against McNary Central, and ninth overall. That ain't good, and it doesn't help that their quarterback, Jonathan Phillips, has already thrown 12 interceptions. Granted, he's got nine touchdowns, but you don't want your quarterback to have a 3-4 to four touchdown interception ratio. And he's doing more harm than good for the Warhawks. They clean up the turnovers. They can get a couple wins, I believe. I mean, they're in the Sun Belt. They're all practically even. You can throw a blanket over them at the beginning of the year and not know who's going to win that conference. And then we have BYU. And the reason mainly is defense. They need to stop someone and let the offense take control. They're allowing 406.6 yards per game. And that's not going to win you games if your offense isn't producing as much. 97th ranked defense in the nation won't do much to win games. But they do need to start playing smarter football if they want to win a couple of games this year. And now number five. It took me a while to find a fifth ranked team here. And that's being Stanford, whose all four losses have been conference losses. So they're basically out of the running. Honey. Right? But they do have a win. Granted, that win was against San Jose State, but it's still a win. They need to get some more wins and definitely need some conference wins, or else they'll need to make some changes as during the offseason. Their next opponent is TCU, so maybe they can pull off the upset of upsets. At number six, I went with Marshall, and the Thundering Herd haven't been thundering much lately having only 68 points through five games. And they've allowed 166 points as well. So, yeah. Nearly, nearly allowing 20 points per game. More than what you're scoring. Probably not the best. And losing to Memphis, 38-17 isn't the best way last week to start off the conference. And they're on the road to Tulsa this week. And they definitely need to gain some momentum. They're currently dealing with third string freshman quarterback Nick Graves, who has four touchdowns, ten interceptions. But he's a freshman, he does have time to grow, so I'm not criticizing him that much, you know. At number seven, I chose Eastern Michigan. And 72 points through five games. Eagles have been a little battered with Coach RVD. But they do have a chance to bounce back next season, as they do have a win, and hope to use that as some momentum. But they need to gain some for this week after being shut out by Michigan, 35 nothing. So they need to build some more power before they can claim to be the best team in Michigan. They do have a chance to at least be the best team in Michigan in the MAC, as they haven't faced Western Michigan or Central Michigan yet. So there's still hope for them. At number 8, I chose Baylor. It was the worst team in the Big 12, hands down. They are 1-5, 0-2 in conference play, and head coach Dale Holland will have a lot of work to do to do to turn around the Bears, as that kind of record, depending on the athletic director, could have him lose his job, but hopefully Holland will find some success in the years to come, as they definitely need to give up with the Longhorns, the Aggies, the Red Raiders, and even the Horned Frogs and TCU. If they can't get any help there, then it's going to be a long tenure or a short tenure for Holland and the Bears. Number nine, we got our lovable losers in Jose State. And they may not be the heart and soul of the WAC, but they do have a decent point total of 132 points through six games. They just haven't been lucky to get the wins. Because, I mean, 179 points, I think a lot of them was against that game against Stanford. So, yeah, you know, a lot of their other games have kind of been, like, one or two score games, but it's been close. Hopefully their luck will turn around for next season, and the last team is North Carolina, who have just not been doing good this season, and are already 0-3 in conference play, including a 40-10 drum delivered to them by that. 
by Miami last week. At this rate, they're just waiting to do the rivalry game against Duke. See who's better in, the, in football between them and for basketball season to come around. Worst team in the ACC is struggling, but maybe they can turn things around with the right recruiting strategies. And now, oh, and there's also been a change, as you can see by the cover, in the Heisman polls as Dylan now leads over Faden. So yeah, you know, those two just switch places. Maybe they'll switch places again at the end of the week. And for the five key games, I avoided putting this game on because it's going to be an easy one anyways. So, yeah. First off, we have Florida State versus Mickey. The newest member of number five team in the Seminoles head to Hell Stadium against the Red Hot Mickey Devils. They are both undefeated, both on their way possibly to the ACC championship, and they will cross paths against each other today. This game will also most likely determine who will represent the athletic, the Atlantic side of things for the ACC championship game. As both teams are undefeated in conference play, Mickey at 3-0 and Florida State at 2-0. I personally think, just based on the stats, especially offense, well, both offensively and defensively stat-wise, well, rating-wise, they're going to win. And they'll continue the streak of the fifth ring curse first throughout the entire nation. Next up, took me a little while to find this one, but it's going to be Oregon State against California. Beavers are looking up to another top 10 Pac-10 team. This time it's the Golden Bears of California. Cal heads into this having won four straight after driving their week one game to Tennessee by a final score of 27-26. This could determine who will win the Pac-10 as Oregon State lost to Arizona State in Week 4, 28-14. If Cal can win, they will remain undefeated in conference play and continue to control their destiny. Both teams love to air it out as well. As you can see, Oregon State ranked 6th and, and Cal's ranked 5th. But I think Oregon State's going to win it when it's because they do have a bit more balance by running the ball a bit. And that's what you really need when it comes to a football game is to balance the run and the pass a lot. I mean, you could be lucky like, I'm going to use Hawaii here. Yeah, Hawaii as an example. You see, Hawaii is second best passing team in the nation and the second worst rushing team in the nation. So, you could be like Hawaii and get lucky on that end, but a lot of times you need to balance things out. And I know Tennessee was in the key game last week, but I can't help but find this one pretty interesting because I would never have assumed Mississippi State was going to be 5-1. and one. And in this SEC matchup, the Volunteers are going down to Starkville to challenge Mississippi State in the Bulldogs. Bulldogs are on a five-game winning streak after falling to LSU in Week 1, 45-17. And the Vols are covered after their loss to Arkansas State with the overtime win against Georgia last week. Both teams need this game to be able to keep up in representing their division for the SEC Championship game. As if Tennessee wins, they'll keep pace with Magnetic Central in the East. And if Mississippi State wins, they have to hope for LSU to lose again, beat Arkansas in Week 12. They have to beat Arkansas in Week 12, which is the same week of the matchup between Tennessee and Magnetic Central. And hope the Razorbacks beat LSU at the end of the season to sneak into Atlanta. But I feel like Tennessee's momentum is more because concerning the fact that I wish this would stop wanting to have me look at my game against and South Carolina. But yeah, I feel like Tennessee's momentum is more considering they are more determined and will ride that wave of momentum to victory. And number four, when I saw this, I instantly knew I had to put this. And there is definitely definitely a story behind this one. As we have to go all the way down. I mean all the way.
away. Number seven, Wisconsin versus number eight, Penn State. In the NCAA Football 07 universe, if y'all watched my Big Ten evaluation, these two teams tied atop the Big Ten standings, with the game actually switching the two teams around, Penn State one week and Wisconsin the next. Now, these two teams enter in the same situation they were in with the controversy from the previous universe, both at one loss. But, where this will not only be one step closer to claiming the Big Ten championship this year, but will also be the undisputed champion in the previous universe. And honestly, I feel like Wisconsin will prevail with their powerful run game being fifth in the nation and their tough pass defense also being fifth in the nation. And yeah, Wisconsin just lost a couple weeks ago to Northwestern, while Penn State's loss is to, I want to say Notre Dame. Let me see if I get, got that correctly, because, yes, I'm fact-checking myself in the middle of a video. Let's see. Yeah, they're only multiples to Notre Dame, so this will be fun, because this could create controversy again. If these two teams tie at the end of the season, but at least this one, Wisconsin will have the tiebreaker. And the last game is between Texas A&M and Texas Tech. In this Big 12 matchup that looked like it was going to be a top 25 matchup until the Red Raiders lost last week to... I want to say it was to Iowa State. Yeah, they lost to Iowa State 37-33 last week. So if they didn't lose, this would be a top 25 matchup. But still highly anticipated, though. And could be a surprise, be, but the Red Raiders could possibly be a surprise to be in the Big 12 Championship game if... Or the Aggies, if one of these teams could possibly beat Texas and Oklahoma. The Aggies are looking to come into Lubbock, beat Texas Tech, and continue to climb the rankings and continue to prove they're the best team in Texas, at least in the Big 12. Meanwhile, Tech will see this game as more of a bounce back game, a bigger game than just the rivalry. Even though, generally speaking, the game doesn't say it's a rivalry, but I think all teams in Texas are in rivalries with each other. And proved that the loss last week was just a fluke, and they will represent the South for the Big 12 championship. I think it's going to be close, but I think Tech will beat AM and bounce back and roll on through. For the next episode, after the Week 7 review, I'm going to do a midseason rewards, so please stay tuned for that, and I will see you all next time.